This is Dr. Bertalan Mesku. I'm the medical futurist and I'm pretty sure that at this point, at least once you've tried using ChatGPT. If not, you use it every day, like I have been doing it for many months now. ChatGPT has its own limitations. It cannot access content after November 2021. Sometimes it hallucinates resources and information. You have to be the one, the user, verifying the quality of information you get from it. All right, but if you use it more and more, and you become better at this very specific skill, you will realize that this is an extraordinarily efficient tool and it can make your life, your job better. I cannot tell you how much time it has saved me in the past couple of months and I've been using it daily. So the specific skill I'm talking about here is called prompt engineering. This is what you have to get better to improve your efficiency while using large language models such as ChatGPT. In this video, I thought I would summarize my absolute top 10 plus one recommendations, suggestions about becoming better at prompt engineering because I have been spending hundreds of hours on ChatGPT to form a relationship with artificial intelligence and to get what I want to get out of the discussions I have been having with that large language models. So here are the 10 plus one suggestions about improving your skills in prompt engineering. Number one is that be as specific as possible. I see people asking general questions to ChatGPT, like they just did a search query on a search engine. It's not helpful. The more specific prompt you use, the higher the chance is that you will get the results that you were looking for. For example, a bad example for a prompt is tell me about heart disease, but a good one is what are the most common risk factors for coronary artery disease? The more specific you are, the better results you will get. Number two, and I find it very important, describe your setting and provide the context. Imagine that ChatGPT is a person you can meet randomly, you don't know each other, but that person might have the answers for your question, but it doesn't know, know anything about you. So the more context you provide, you will have a better chance to get the answers you deserve. For example, I'm writing an article for my website with an audience of healthcare professionals and policymakers worldwide about how to improve skills in prompt engineering for people working in healthcare. Can you please list a few of those tips and tricks with some specific prompt examples? That's a setting it will understand and I will receive something useful for my studies. Number three, experiment with different prompt styles. For this, of course, you have to know that there are different prompt styles, there are different outputs you can receive. Just a few examples will demonstrate what I'm talking about here. You can ask ChatGPT a direct question. What are the symptoms of COVID-19? Or you can ask it to list the potential symptoms for COVID-19. You can ask it to summarize the key symptoms and the progressions of, progression of COVID-19 or explain the symptoms of COVID-19. If you set and define the prompt style as specifically as possible, then you will get what you look for. Otherwise, it will try to match your requests and needs, but the chance, of course, will be lower. Number four, identify the overall goal of your prompt first. What do you want to get? Just a few ideas to help you brainstorm or a specific piece of data or information you have been looking for. You want to get a list, you can expand or you want to get um, like a written statement, a social media post, a short story, define the overall goal. For example, I would like to get a short list of five ideas for a YouTube channel uh, for a video on the future of healthcare thinking about large language models. The output will be a list of ideas. I will be able to keep working on those ideas and maybe ask ChatGPT to write scripts about each, but now the output I want to get is a list of creative ideas. Number five, it might be strange, but ask ChatGPT to play roles for you. For weeks, I've been trying to learn Spanish and I couldn't find good books or a teacher uh, around my location. So I started asking ChatGPT to act like a teacher and teach me Spanish. I told what things I'm aware in the Spanish language and grammar. And since then, we have been working together on this. You can also ask ChatGPT to act like a data scientist and explain prompt engineering for students or act as my nutritionist and give me tips about a balanced Mediterranean diet. It will keep on assuming that role and talk to you from that perspective. It's very useful. Number six, iterate and refine. Even when you become an experienced person in prompt engineering, you won't get anything uh, for the first try because it's a very complex service. It has neural networks and it's really takes time. it really takes time to 
to create that relationship with it, to understand what kind of prompts I should think about to get the desired outcome. So feel free to refine your questions. Actually, if you don't understand something, you are encouraged to, to give feedback that, well, I didn't understand that one, or uh, it's not good enough, but let's keep on trying with new examples around this or that new idea. It will keep on giving you better responses. Number seven, use the threads. On the left column, you can see all the threads you've already had with ChatGPT. If you want to go back to a previous thread, you can just click on it, which is quite beneficial for you, because it means you don't have to define and, and describe the setting, the contest, everything again. It will understand where you are in the discussion and you can just uh, continue the discussion from that point. I've been using it for weeks. Number eight, ask open-ended questions because open-ended questions often yield more comprehensive results. Just two examples. A close question would be, is um, exercise important for patients with osteoporosis? And an open-ended question would be, how does a regular physical activity benefit patients with osteoporosis? With these open-ended questions, ChatGPT has a a better chance to give uh, more detailed, more comprehensive responses. Number nine, request examples. Um, I found it important to, to realize that this is a discussion you are having with a large language model. It won't give you the answers you're looking for in the first place, as we discussed before, but if you don't understand something, just like in a human-to-human -human conversation, ask for examples. When for the first time I asked ChatGPT what generative AI is, and it described in very technical terms, I asked it to provide an example. And it said that, well, Let's think about a restaurant theme. We have a customer and a waiter. And the customer orders a hamburger based on the menu and the waiter brings it to the table. In generative AI, the waiter will bring a very exciting, customized uh, kind of dish made specifically for that customer without even being on the menu. Well, I understood immediately how generative AI is different from the AI that's already on the market. So ask. ChatGPT to provide you with examples. Number 10, use time wisely. By time, I mean whenever you're asking about a process or a timeline, be specific and, and specify that in your prompt. For example, without time reference, describe the healing process after knee surgery. You know, it can be one week or 10 years. Or with time reference, what can a patient typically expect during the first six weeks of healing after knee surgery? ChatGPT will be in a much better position to provide you with the details you were looking for. And just uh, one more thing, the 10 plus one, set realistic expectations. If you look for a specific piece of information, you have a better chance to find it without the need to verify it through a search engine because search engines have been around for decades. But if you need complex tasks to be solved, you have something complex to think about, and you, you need creative ideas, but generative AI can contribute to your table, then just set your expectations realistically. Like, for example, an unrealistic prompt, knowing the limitations of this tool is that what's the latest research published this month about Alzheimer's disease? But you need to know as a user that it doesn't have access to information after November 2021. So a realistic prompt would be what were some of the major research breakthroughs in Alzheimer's treatment up until 2021? See, just one example about how you can learn to allow ChatGPT to contribute to whatever you are doing. But in general, please use it to expand your knowledge, to support whatever you do, to help you improve at your job, at certain skills, at understanding a specific technical term, whatever you have in mind. It's a tool to support what we do, not to replace us. But prompt engineering is the emerging key skill that you need to have in order to achieve that dream and unleash the power of artificial intelligence in your life. These tips and recommendations, I guarantee you, will make you better at prompt engineering. So enjoy practicing working with ChatGPT. If you like this video, please subscribe below to get notified about every single new video we come up with. And also please go to medicalfuturist.thinkific.com where you will find our two courses, the Digital Health course and our newest one, Introduction to Artificial Intelligence in Medicine and Healthcare. See you there.